Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Thursday, January 7th, 2016, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, a German broadcaster apologizes for being silent on a rash of sexual assaults. Then, 75 times Obama has broken laws in office. After that, release transcripts tell of Gaddafi warning Tony Blair of a migrant influx. And the latest airport horror stories. That's next. Yeah, we've got to have the TSA stick the hands down the pants. Because somebody might go on here and might blow up an airplane. And so we've got to do it to six-year-olds, we've got to do it to pop stars, we've got to do it to Miss America. Our hands are going in your pants, and if you don't want our hands down your pants, go through the scanner. Oh, but by the way, when we put you through the scanner, we also go hands down the pants. Oh, that's been announced. That's what they do. They do both. They, are, they admit they want to do all of it to everybody. Everyone scanned, everyone hand down the pants. They're... Clean, pure drinking water. You can't survive without it. But where do you get it? Alexa Pure Pro is a brand new groundbreaking gravity-fed water filtration system that is like no other. The Alexa Pure Pro transforms water from virtually any fresh source into clean, healthy drinking water. Pairing the unprecedented super filtration power of an all-new gravity block core with a hybrid chromatic shell, it removes up to 99.999% of impurities, including bacteria, viruses, fluoride, disinfectants, volatile organic contaminants and hormones filter capacity up to 5,000 gallons stainless steel construction easy assembly low maintenance replacement filters are simple to install and now as part of an exclusive limited time introductory offer you can save $20 off the retail price and get free shipping this is a limited time offer so order your unit today and receive free shipping and $20 off go to infowarsstore.com or call 888-253-3139 People have been calling for President Obama's impeachment for years, but could that finally be coming to fruition? Now there are reports circulating online that suggest that the Republican National Committee is about to consider a resolution drafted for the impeachment of President Barack Obama. Calls for President Obama's impeachment have circulated for years, but he's finally gone too far. Steve Watson reports... RNC will consider Obama impeachment proceedings. A document titled Articles of Impeachment of Barack Hussein Obama consists of 48 criminal charges and is set to be weighed up at a January 13th meeting of the RNC. The resolution cites Obama's malfeasance, misconduct, and abuse of the Oval Office and includes the IRS targeting of conservative organizations and bypassing Congress with the use of executive action on key issues. Article 3 of the resolution states that Obama has been aiding and abetting known enemies of the United States, including the Muslim Brotherhood, ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Hamas, and the Taliban, among others. The committeeman behind the resolution says that we are a nation of laws and separation of powers, and this lets the president know that we are not going to put up with his ability to go around the Constitution. So they impeached Clinton for getting sexual favors and lying about it under oath. But we can't seem to impeach Obama for breaking federal laws seemingly on the daily. Now, we've done it before. Can we do it again? Now, here is an extensive list of Obama's crimes showing why Congress must impeach him now. Kit Daniels has more. He's going to give you just a few of the 75 times Obama broke the law during his presidency. President Barack Obama is simply a monopoly man who's no different than John D. Rockefeller and Cecil Rhodes. But instead of having a monopoly on the diamond trade, President Obama wants a monopoly on power in the initiation of force, which is the very definition of government. It was the 18th century political philosopher Montesquieu who said, quote, There can be no liberty when the legislative and executive powers are united in the same person or body of magistrates. But this is exactly what President Obama is doing right now and should concern every citizen. I mean, he has a consistent pattern of lawlessness, uh, eagerness to disregard the law, unilateral action to circumvent Congress, you know, like he's doing recently with the gun control executive action. Uh, he has he's just really pushing this bold acceleration in towards tyranny and is simply engaged in sedition against the country with his uh, suspending, delaying, waiving portion of laws like Obamacare, for example, 
that, you know, he's in charge to enforce, not to rewrite laws, but that's exactly what he's doing. He's simply rewriting laws. And he's, you know, dictatorships are often characterized by an abundance of laws. But, you know, in Obama's case, abundance of executive actions. But we're a nation of law, you know, not men. So, and according to the Constitution, you know, nobody, especially not Obama, is above the law. You know, like I said just now, it's he, we are a nation of law, not men. I mean, let's break it down. For example, you know, he's uh, with Operation Fast and Furious, which started in 2009. He was arming Mexican drug cartels to, in order to uh, blame the Second Amendment later on. And not even that, but also he has been in, arming ISIS militants. You know, he's been uh, saying that he is arming milita militants in Syria, you know, rebels against the Syrian government. But what he's not telling you is that the majority of Syrian rebels since at least 2013 has been affiliated with ISIS. And they've even admitted this to various reporters that have been in the area in Syria reporting on the war, the civil war that's been going on for so many years. I mean, it's, it's so ridiculous that you have a sitting president here that's openly funding and arming uh, ISIS militants that are chopping off Christians' heads off and destroying, you know, uh, these areas in Syria that these uh, ancient Roman structures that have been around for 2,000 years, they're just, you know, bulldozing it down, putting on Sharia law. I mean, Syria is a place that since the Roman Empire, the Byzantine Empire, like past 15, 2,000 years, that Christians and Muslims have lived in peace. And yet now we have Obama who is putting, literally putting in a proxy army with the taxpayer money to behead Christians and completely eradicate, destroy the country. And it's just, a, it's a complete mess. And it's completely ridiculous. But that's not the only thing he's done that's been outside of law. But let's go back down on the list. Uh, he's also attempted to shut down gun stores outside of law with an opera, uh, this program called Operation Choke Point in which the Justice Department was pressuring banks to refuse service to gun stores. Now down to uh, here in Austin, we have a, a local gun store, a gun shop called Central Texas Gun Works, which is uh, owned by Mar Michael Cargill, a long-term guest on the Alex Jones Show. And he, uh, he was one of the first people to tell me about this program, which I broke, which ended up on the Drudge Report, about how uh, the uh, Justice Department and it was a couple of other agencies were going to these banks and saying, you know, these are gun stores high risk. It's no different than a loan shark company. So, you know, they were basically overloading the banks with uh, loans, with all this paperwork and uh, loan paperwork and credit paperwork and whatnot, all these uh, regulations that they had to that they had to do extra for to in order to conduct business with gun stores. So. You know, and this is, of course, planned by design by the Justice Department that the banks were not going to be willing to do that just for certain uh, businesses. So they were like, no, we're not going to do that at all. You know, so now you see all these gun shops that were completely getting, having to close shop because they didn't have a bank that they could uh, conduct their transactions with any longer. And that is simply a, a simple, a classic example of criminal racketeering by the Obama administration. And also, let's not forget that President Obama has practically opened the borders to allow thousands of illegal aliens, not just from Mexico, but not just from Latin America, but from all over the world to flood into the United States. Now, you know, he's, uh, for example, the Border Patrol was caught buying bus tickets for illegal aliens to ship them deeper in the country. And I'm not trying to throw the Border Patrol under the bus. You know, I'm not saying they're a lot of this was due to Obama telling them what to do. But what you had was the Border Patrol was detaining illegals after they crossed the border, but then they were uh, detaining them for several weeks in uh, detention facilities, you know, all over the Southwest United States. But then they were buying these illegals bus tickets for, to literally go wherever they wanted to go into the country. You know, if they had family in Minneapolis, for example, taxpayers were paying money to complete the, the uh, importation, the smuggling process of illegal aliens, you know, taking them from McAllen, Texas, for example, all the way to Minneapolis or Detroit. <laughs> and this is this is by design. This, uh, President Obama even told the Border Patrol back in 2013 that they needed to back off enforcing immigration laws. I mean, I was down there like two years ago on the border, and I saw more Texas state troopers on the border than I saw Border Patrol agents. 
I mean, this is a complete stand down of the border, and it's by design to to destroy the country and to eradicate national sovereignty. I mean, we had a uh, vice president of the National Border Patrol Con Council told Breitbart that we are simply being ordered to stand down and stop tracking and trying to apprehend the criminals. And the sad part about this is a lot of people don't realize is that human trafficking is a huge business in globally. It's a billion dollar business. We have more slaves now in the world than we did in the during the Civil War, during the 16th, 17th, 18th centuries, during the Spanish Empire, during you know the English Empire. Right now, there is more people that are enslaved than any time in human history. And you know the, the sickening part of this is that people are being paid, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars to smuggle illegal aliens into the country, and then these illegal aliens end up working in sex shops, you know, massage parlors. If you go on Craigslist in any city, and you'll see all sorts of massage parlor. They're all staffed, almost all of them are staffed by you know, illegal aliens that were smuggled into the country. And these people are pay being paid below minimum wage. And, you know, it's it's just really sad how all these people are just being enslaved, all thanks to President Obama for not enforcing law as he's supposed to do under the Constitution, but rather making, doing his own way. You know, saying, I'm not, I don't like that law, so I'm not going to enforce it at law. In fact, I'm going to pretend that law doesn't exist. And that's exactly what he did with the Border Patrol. For one thing, once you go down into the Mexico on the border, there's like literally hundreds and thousands of warehouses that are full with the illegal aliens that are ready to cross into the country. And these air houses, uh, the warehouses are not air conditioned. You know, they're complete hot, human hundreds of people piled up. They're literally modern day equivalents of slave ships. So what we're really seeing now is President Obama, by violating the Constitution to open the borders, he is now the global slave master you know, that uh, that's leading a billion dollar slave industry of across the world. And here's another one of Obama's crimes. He is using his so-called pen in his phone to write an executive action to enact gun control outside of law and outside of Congress. Zero Hedge reported, quote, without a Democratic majority in Congress and faced with a GOP that is firmly against any form of gun control measures, Obama has repeatedly warned that he would act on his own. Here's something else that President Obama is doing that violates the Constitution. He's trying to use executive action to prevent people from that are on the government's no-fly list to from buying a gun. Now, I'm sure the media spins that as sounding like a great idea, like, oh, well, they're on the no-fly list. You know, why should they be able to buy a gun? But here's what they're not telling you. The no-fly list is a clear violation of the Fifth Amendment and a clear violation of people's due process because, frankly speaking, the government can put anybody on the no-fly list. It can say that, oh, we're, that person's suspicious, you know. We suspect them of being involved in some terrorist activity, so we're going to put them on the no-fly list. And there's really no way to for someone who's been erroneously placed on the no-fly list, and there's thousands of people that have been erroneously placed on the no-fly list, for being able to appeal the process. You know, they're just basically stuck there for years. There was this one... This one uh, example of this lady who was like a college student and she was uh, put on the no-fly list because her name was i think sounded similar to someone else's name she had been on she was on the no-fly list for 10 years until finally the aclu was able to lobby on her behalf to get her off the list so basically speaking this whole no-fly list is just a way for president obama to put whoever he wants on the list and restrict their second amendment rights outside of law outside of due process this is exactly what you expect a dictator of a third world country to do. And if I was to go over the 75 crimes that Obama's committed that I know of, you know, it's, I'd be on in front of a camera for two or three hours. So you can go on Infowars.com and look at the article your, yourself 75 times Obama has uh, violated, broke law during his presidency. And just, you know, go through it yourself, share that article, get it out to everybody you know. Because this is a big deal when you have a president who is openly acting like a dictator. And I mean, I know it sounds like right wing rhetoric to call Obama a dictator, but he really is acting like a dictator. He's establishing an imperial presidency. And just think that someone, you know, God forbid, that's worse than Obama gets into office. Obama is setting a president for him to be able to just enact martial law or whatever he wants to do. Because now 